Hello all, welcome back. In the last tutorial, we have written the software for Silings VDMA IP core and we used it to display the vertical stripe test pattern on the screen. So in this tutorial, we are going to display an image on the monitor. So that's what our initial motivation was. We were doing image processing and we wanted to show the output of image processing uh, not through UART and on the computer instead we want to send it to the monitor directly and see it there okay so for that uh, I'm going to slightly modify my code here so we need a test image I am going to use again Lena and uh, I'm going to use the same technique I used before so the image data I will store it in a header file as a constant array and I will be using this array within my code uh, for for storing this image in the DDR memory. So if you haven't watched that video uh, You need to watch it the technique Okay, so That time this array I generated using Verilog itself Now the issue with that is if you're using BMP image the data corresponding to the first pixel in the BMP image is not stored at the first position it is stored in the inverted position okay so the bottom left corner that is representing the first pixel so if you directly use that array and try to use it on the monitor you will see an inverted image on a computer you are not seeing like that because the software which is opening this BMP image he knows like this is BMP image so how it is stored and also he will show you properly uh, that's why the header is important here we don't have the bmp header information we have the raw data so the pixels should be in the order okay so the first pixel should be the first element in the array that you can easily do with matlab if you have matlab if you don't have matlab you can write a python or c script which can easily do it so in matlab this is how i am doing it i am just reading that image and i am opening a text file then I go through the row and column and I take uh, element by element from that image and just print the corresponding decimal value and finally close that file. So once you do like that, it will look uh, like this. You will get that array. So this is the first pixel, this is the second pixel, so on and so forth. And uh, that you can just add to a header file. Here I am calling it image data.h. And you declare care image data as an array and you just put two curly brackets at the beginning and end, and you have that uh, constant array so I'm going to include this header file uh, to my previous code here so that now this this array which represents the image becomes part of my uh, software so that is one technique so in the previous tutorial what we did was okay so this is what we did we had this for loop which is basically generating that uh, stripes right so instead of that now I have written a new function and we are going to call that function draw image and this is the function which is going to help us to display this image on the screen now remember your image data it is a continuous array and so called the data buffer you remember we have this buffer here this one this is what is transmitted to the monitor and that is also a, a constant array with this size now suppose the size of your image the resolution of your image if it is same as the resolution of your uh, display life is much easier you can simply copy that image data to this buffer and you will see it on the screen but in most of the cases that is not the case for example in our case the image resolution is 512 by 512 but the resolution of the monitor is this one 1920 by 1080 or 1080 by 1920 so they are not matching okay so you have a big array which is representing your frame and you have a small array which is representing the image so if you directly copy this image to to our video buffer instead of showing it as a 512 by 512 i think it will be Less than one by fourth of the actual image uh, size because you see the horizontal size here is 1920 and here it is only 512 so 
so you won't see the actual image you will see some gibberish on the screen so what you have to do is you need to uh, you need to copy this image data to the appropriate position within this buffer so that that image uh, looks like a proper image okay so that's why we have this function so the input to this function are the size of your frame you can specify the horizontal and vertical sizes of your frame you can also specify the size of your image okay so let me say like uh, h size image and image v size i have this constant declared here both 512 so you specify the size of the image and you need to specify the offset basically from which position he should start displaying the image on the monitor so let's display uh, it at the middle of our display so if i write this equation or this expression so the horizontal size of the display minus horizontal size of the image by 2 so horizontally he will be at the midpoint similarly vertically also i am doing the same thing so vertically also he will be at the midpoint and i am passing the address of the image data which is basically this array so you can either write image data or ampersand image data of soup so that is what is we are passing to this function now this is that function you can read it and easily understand it what it does is it it has these two for loops which is going through the entire uh, frame buffer pixel by pixel and uh, if the pixel value is less than the offset or if it is more than offset plus image vertical size that means these are the pixels above the image and these are the pixels below the image when we are going to display it on the screen similarly these are the pixels on the left side of the image and these are the pixel on the right side of the uh, image we are making them zero so all those pixels will be black and uh, here we are actually copying the image data to the frame buffer okay when we are at the appropriate position and uh, you will see like uh, r g b all three of them are getting same value because our monitor it is a tricolor monitor but our image it is a grayscale image so you if you want to display a grayscale on a tricolor monitor you have to give the same value the same uh, pixel intensity value to r g p all three channels then you will see it like a grayscale and i'm just incrementing the image pointer after copying this okay at the end we need to do a cache flash so that it gets stored in the ddr and we just go back so instead of this code we have this code that's the only difference okay so now let's go ahead and test it And this is the output I am seeing. I cannot see Lena clearly, but uh, you can see some kind of outline of Lena on the monitor, but it is not clear. So why is it happening? Because if you remember, our pixel values, they are 8-bit, but our VGA interface, it is only 4-bit. So finally, only the lower 4-bits from the pixel value will be going uh, to the monitor so if you have a pixel value say 255 which is supposed to be a white pixel since only the lower four bits are going to the to the display uh, in 255 lower four bits are zero so instead of seeing white you will be seeing black okay so what you have to do you have to shift it right by four position you need to uniformly scale all the pixels okay so you need to either shift it by four bits or you can divide pixel value with 16 because right shift by 4 bits is same as dividing by 16. Okay, so now let's try. And now we can see Lena clearly, but when you see it on your monitor, you will clearly see the effect of. Uh, removing that uh, lower four bits so there is some reduction in the quality of the image 
Okay, so that's all. In this tutorial, I'll be sharing this code with you and uh, please try it out. I'll also share with you this array also, this constant array also, so that you can try it out. So all this will work assuming you have a monitor which is supporting 1080p. If it doesn't support 1080p, you'll have to change everything including in your hardware because our video timing generator that's also assuming you have 1080p. So how to change this uh, resolution dynamically, uh, we can check it in another tutorial. Okay, thank you.